Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the built-in applications on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Samsung has added a lot of really cool apps that we want to show you. Let's get to it. So previously, we talked about the hardware on the Galaxy S2, and we also dived into TouchWiz 4.0, which is, of course, comprised of a lot of really cool elements uh, that makes the UI really interesting and fun. Um, if you want to check out those videos, we'll put links up at the end of this video. We know a lot of people are following these videos on the Galaxy S2. It's going to be a very popular device this year, and it's actually been delayed. It's not shipping right now, but it should be in a couple of weeks. We're just very excited to be able to show you this device before you order one. We know it's expensive. We want to help you make the right decision. So let's dive into some of these included apps. We're going to skip any of the stock built-in apps like you know, calendar and, and, and clock and whatnot, uh, because those are basic. Also, we're going to talk about the internet browser in the next video. We're going to compare the browser uh, with that of iOS Android and Windows Phone 7. The browser on this thing smokes. It is probably the fastest browser we've ever seen. It is really incredible what, what two cores, uh, or at least the Exynos processor can do for browsing. And we're going to compare uh, coming up soon. So let's go through this. We're, these are all stock applications. We've got something called Reader's Hub here, which is really cool. What this is is basically a gateway for all kinds of digital content. We've got news over here. And what this lets you do is download uh, newspapers. And the interface is really cool. I've downloaded an issue of the Philadelphia Inquirer. You can pinch to zoom. It looks really good on the Super AMOLED Plus display on the Galaxy S2. Most things do look really good on this display. And this application is cool because if you want to try it, you don't have to sign in. You don't have to pay anything. And if you go over to store, you can actually filter out newspapers by country. Uh, it really is quite comprehensive, the number of newspapers that are available. And you can quickly download an, an issue. You can set it to automatically download the new issue every day. So you can read newspapers on your phone. Pretty cool. And if we go back, we've got a book section, which is just linking to the Kobo ebook store. Of course, there's also the Amazon. There's the Nook ebook store and many others. There's Google Books now. So certainly, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. Uh, they're just suggesting that, that you do. And also, there's a magazine hub, which is just the Zinio application, which you can download anyway from the Android market. You have to sign in. You have to create an account. Uh, it's much more interesting when you can test something and not have to sign in like this news feature up here. Now, another thing down here is Game Hub. There are three hubs. There's actually more than that. But let's go into the Game Hub. We've got two panels up here, two tabs. We've got social games. Samsung just rec uh, Samsung's just sort of recommending games for you to download. And we've got premium games over here. All of these are trials, unfortunately. There aren't any you know, full featured premium games included on this device, which is kind of a shame. I've already gone ahead and downloaded GT Racing. So let's take a look at what that looks like. GT Racing doesn't seem to be optimized for WVGA resolution, strangely, but you can get a sense for how gaming performance is with this particular application. We can take a look at loading times and frame rates and things like that. So let's play this for a couple of minutes, or at least for, for a, a few seconds before I crash into a wall. So loading. All right, here we go. Just bounce through this real quick. We'll take that car. We'll click start. Kind of just fly through these screens so we can get to an actual race. All right. And we've got the accelerator on the right. I'm just going to floor it right off the line. And you can, you can see how, how, how bad I am at this game. But you can see frame rates are pretty darn smooth. I mean, it's... Uh, it might be a testament to the game. It might be a testament to the to the hardware performance of this device. But other games I've tested look really, really good on this phone, uh, which kind of makes sense because there's a lot of power behind this. So the game looks good. The resolution isn't perfect. It doesn't look optimized for the higher resolution uh, WVGA screen here. But that is uh, that is gaming. So we'll get out of that.
Okay, and we're back into the application tray, and there's something else called Music Hub, which is Samsung's music store. Uh, if you want to download music to your device, Google's probably going to release a music service actually today, or probably by the time you see this video, they will have announced that. Android really doesn't have a good music service uh, right now. Windows Phone 7 has Zoom, iOS has iTunes, but Android really doesn't have anything. So Samsung's trying to beat Google to the gun here and uh, sort of create a application that allows you to download music. So we've got Beastie Boys' new album. You can buy it for five bucks or you can download these tracks. So it's a four-pay music service, obviously, and you can uh, download music right into the music library of your Android phone, which is pretty cool. So we can go back and get to the previous screen. Okay, let's swipe to the right, see what else we have. The device comes with a file explorer, which is nice, so you don't have to go ahead and download a third-party file explorer. We've got a music application, which is actually very simple. It looks pretty much like the stock Android application, actually, for music. We've got a video playing application. If we go down, we've got voice command and voice talk, and this is actually pretty cool. Uh, so if we go into voice command, it's a very well done voice command application. You can see sort of the things that you can do with it. You can call somebody, you can update Twitter, you can reply to text messages. Um, so Twitter update, let's try this one. Twitter update, I am testing the Samsung Galaxy S2. See if it gets it. Check it out. Perfect. I am testing the Samsung Galaxy S2. Really cool voice uh, voice command there. This is great if you're driving. You don't feel like getting your phone out and texting while you're driving, which you should never do. Uh, so you can use voice command. And there's also a widget for this, so you can quickly activate the voice command when you are driving. And if we go down, we have another thing called Social Hub, which is really just an aggregator for all of your social networking. Uh, so from here, you can add an account and gives you a wide variety of accounts that you can add. So if you want to put your social networking in one place, you can do it through that. Uh, we've got a photo editing application, which is kind of basic and kind of pointless, actually. So let's just take a picture, and you can see you can crop it. You can fill it with colors. You can add some ghost effects or whatever. You have to make a selection first. So very basic photo editing application, nothing that will rival Photoshop, of course. Uh, we've got something called All Share here, which is the DLNA application, which allows you to share content from your device wirelessly to DLNA-supported devices. And it's a pretty nice application. And this is really cool right here, Keys Air. It's a wireless management tool that allows you to remotely access your phone from a local web browser. I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so we've got the Keys Air connected, and let me just show you what the screen looks like. It gives you a web address to use, and it as long as you're on the Wi-Fi network, all you have to do is plug in a web address to your browser, and boom, you are connected to your phone. So let me show you some of the things you can do. Uh, this is your dashboard, so you can see photos that are on your device, videos. Over here on the right, you can see music if you're playing anything. We've got File Explorer, and you can collapse these and move them around. It's kind of a really cool interface, a cool way to see your phone. It's kind of like HTCSense.com, although the way it looks now is that you can't use you can't use this remote phone management tool if you're not near your phone. You have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. So we can drill down on these panels on the left to photos. We can download them to our computer or upload new ones. Uh, we've got music and videos and ringtones. You can upload ringtones. Here's a really handy feature, bookmarks. So it's kind of annoying to add bookmarks onto a mobile phone, especially if you've got a lot of sites that you check. You can just do it wirelessly through this particular application. There's no login required. All you do, again, is enter this web address up here, depending on uh, what your phone's telling you to do. If you've got SMS, you can manage them from here. You can manage your call log, your contacts, even jump into the file explorer and see, uh, and see what's going on. Down here, you can even play music, stream music from your phone to your web browser. Really cool functionality here in Keys Air. Uh, not as robust or, or you know, versatile as HTCSense.com, but certainly very easy to set up, very easy to use to remotely manage your phone. Okay, and we're back, continuing on, swiping to the right. We've got a voice recorder, a video maker, which is really kind of like iMovie, but for Android. So what we can do here is we can make a new project. You can uh, create an effect. So let's choose stage. You can swipe to the right, very much like iMovie, as you can see. Uh, so we can hit apply. And basically, you take multimedia from your phone, whether it's music, uh, photos, videos, or even you could take a new 
photo or video, you drag it to the timeline, and boom, it applies music, it applies the transitions, you've got an instant movie uh, right on your phone. Pretty cool. I'm going to back out here. Um, also on the screen, we've got something called Samsung Apps, which is, hey, another app store, like we needed one. Uh, so this will allow you to see certain applications that Samsung rec recommends. The selection's really not that comprehensive. We can go to category. You can see the number of apps that are here. I mean, why, do, why, why is Samsung doing this? The Android App Store is, is perfectly fine. The Amazon App Store is perfectly fine. Uh, we don't need another App Store. Um, and there's really nothing exclusive in there, so it's not like they've added apps that you can't find anywhere else. We've got the Task Manager, which we've already talked about. This is also accessible when you tap and hold on the Home button. You can just quickly go into the Task Manager. Uh, we've got FM radio, which is, which is great if you like to listen to local radio broadcasts. You have to have your headset connected naturally. You get this really cool sort of retro looking interface for that. Uh, we've got a memo pad, which we've talked about previously. Uh, Polaris Office, which allows for more advanced manipulation of Office documents. So you can you know, edit Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, or whatnot, which is quite nice. BBC iPlayer is just a way to look at BBC broadcasts. We've got something called Suggest right here, which is just linking to a website. This is kind of kind of silly that allows Samsung to show you certain um, apps that it recommends. And it's got a nice interface here. You can swipe to the right. And here are some apps. If you need help in, in getting some apps to download, you can click on that. So a lot of really cool applications built in. We really like this Keys Air remote browser management. Really cool uh, feature there. We also like... Uh, the Reader's Hub, especially in its ability to let you look at newspapers without having to download or, or sign up for a trial, at least in the beginning. So a lot of really cool software offerings here. Not that much crapware, or really no crapware. Uh, we're happy to report on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Once the carriers get a hold of this, we're probably going to see crapware because that's what tends to happen. Coming up soon, we're going to talk about the web browser of the Samsung Galaxy S2. You don't want to miss it. It's really incredible what this thing can do uh, in terms of web browsing speed. Again, we're going to put up links on the video right now. If you want to jump back to the hardware video or to the TouchWiz 4.0 tour, we'll be back with a lot more on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Thanks for watching, and that's it for now.